Ecolution. Welcome back to Ecolution. I'm Evie Kenny, your host, and this is the YouTube spin off of the podcast Ecolution. That show is available now wherever you get your podcasts. And this time, we're looking into changing our habits. 89% of people across the world accept that climate change is real and that humans are to blame. But it seems like the number of people willing to change their behaviours and how they live is a lot lower. Emily, Hugh, Yuming and Chloe are back to help me get to the bottom of the subject. So let's begin. Guys, how many of your friends and family accept the realities of the climate crisis? Hugh, I'm going to come to you first. Um, actually, almost all of my friends and family accept it. My friends who will be very happy to hear their names mentioned in a podcast. Um, Ethan, Harry, Seba and Wesley, they all really accept it. We sometimes actually have a conversation about it. We're not normally, we're not normal speakers, basically. We normally talk about stuff like climate change and stuff like that. It's fun. We have big conversations and they all accept it fairly. That's amazing to hear that so, it's, it's yeah. aware in your friend group. Yeah. Incredible. And Emily, is climate change at the forefront of people's minds in Cork? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, almost all of my friends and family is the same as you, um, except climate change as well. Um, like my friends and stuff at school and TY, we do a lot of projects on climate change. And like even when we are doing projects, we have to incorporate areas of sustainability in it. So pretty much everyone I know accepts it. This is such such good news to hear. Yes. <laughs> you mean, how about you? Yeah, I'd have to agree. I think all of my friends are, are all very accepting of the fact that uh, the climate is warming up slowly. So it's very good to see. And we, we actually do sometimes have a conversation about it. So it's very good, yeah. Good. And Chloe, do you feel that most of the people you know accept the impact of our actions? Yeah, I'll continue the good news. I think everyone that I know would like accept climate change and accept like the consequences of our actions I think it's hard to keep it at the forefront of your mind all the time like it's not like you don't go about every minute of every day thinking about the climate even the most extreme climate activists but I think I think people are aware of it and I think that's where like that's kind of the root of the solution at least so yeah no it is hard it's such a heavy <laughs> subject to have on your mind all the time so it's, it's good to hear that you guys can have open conversations without it being too heavy so as always we like to get a question from one of you I'm Amelia. I'm Connor. And we're from Clareham National School. My question is, what do you think stops people acting on climate change? Emily, what do you reckon? Um, I suppose maybe people don't fully understand it. They don't understand that it is a very important issue. And maybe as well, we find a lot that climate change is just such a big problem that you can feel so small and you don't feel like your actions will make a big difference like you might say oh why would I buy a reusable bottle like that's not going to do anything or you know but it's actually the opposite like if we all work together if we all buy our reusable bottles you know if we all walk to school that's like we are working all working towards the, that shared global goal so yeah amazing and Hugh what do you think stops people well, everyone's probably thinking, oh, it's such a big problem, a little act won't change it, but since they all think that um, it won't really help, but if they all did think otherwise, then it would turn into a big action. So until people think it like that, then it's not going to change much, is it? So true. And Chloe, is there a barrier to action that you see in Cork? I think the biggest barrier to action is like biggest county in Ireland and all, but it feels very small and like unless it's happening to you locally, it's difficult to connect it. I think like people, it's human nature to be kind of reactive rather than proactive. Like you don't fight something until it comes knocking on your front doorstep. So like until there's a big flood in Cork or until there's something that links to climate change, while you might see it in the news, it's hard to respond to it in your everyday life. So I think... It's good the more we see it, the more we think, okay, this is something for me to act on, even if it's not affecting me personally, even if it's not affecting like my friends or my family or the locality of Cork, it's affecting the world and like I can do something to change it. Incredible. And you mean at a school level, is there something that slows action? Could you, as in to slow action, so... Yeah, so like at a school level, is there anything that maybe stops people from acting? Yeah, I, I suppose I agree with Emily here. It's just a feeling of like you know your action being so small and so pointless. But I think I might link in the analogy of uh, you know the thousand fish the story, where it's like you know your your lad is like throwing fish back into the sea after the tide's gone out, and uh, and like you know your man goes over and goes, 
oh, what's that going to make? And he's like, I made a difference to that one. So I think if every single action we do slowly builds up, eventually we'll one day reach that solution. That's such a good message. Like, I think you're all so right. I reckon that it's the the fact that people think it's so far from them and that it, because we, like, let's say in Ireland, we don't see ex- extremely, it does affect us, but, you know, not in everyday life that people don't think that it's it's affecting us. So they're like, why would I bother? Um, so as a panel, I think you're all people who have decided to look at our behaviours to work out what's going wrong. But what was the thing you learned about our current situation that motivated you to change your behaviour? Chloe, I'll come to you first. Um, a couple of years back when we were doing the water flag, we held like a water day, everyone wore blue and we had a little like water related activity. So one one game was like, uh, you'd have to guess how much water went into like a certain product or service. So I'd made posters and I spent hours doing them. And as I was kind of colouring and drawing them and writing them out, it got me like thinking, like I had to spend time thinking about something. So I was thinking about what I was writing and putting down these posters. And like one example was like how many litres of water goes into a T-shirt and 2,000 litres was the answer I found in Google and that felt uh, like I wouldn't really think about that. Um, but that was 70 showers and then I thought like, a couple of weeks ago I bought a good few t-shirts and pennies. Like that's all the showers now of the year gone on those couple of t-shirts and I think that made me think, oh, like like all my actions, though they seem small, are actually really big. So like that definitely made like smaller behavioural changes in me. Yeah, 100%. And Hugh, was there a first thing that you heard that made you want to change? Um, there have been a few things that made me want to do a bit more. Like, I heard how light pollution can affect things, so I started like turning off all lights at any time, whenever it was day. And mainly pollution facts made me start doing things like recycling more and just turning off lights. Yeah, good life adaptions that you've made. So, you mean, can you remember a news story or a class in school that particularly struck you? A news story, I suppose. Yeah, I was at a uh, I was at a climate conference and I was listening to a lady talk about her country, and I think it was Kenya. And what happened was they had massive floods due to climate change. And what happened was that they lost half of their entire GDP worth in the space of one night. I'm like, oh my god, like you know. You've been working on the farm for an entire year and suddenly this flood comes and your entire family has no food to eat. I'm like, that's shocking. Mm. So since then, like, you know, I've been trying to do my best. Uh, doing what you can, of doing course. Can. And Emily, was there a fact that made you worried enough to act? Yeah, <clears throat> definitely. Um, I remember last year during the summer I was in Germany and we were doing this workshop on climate justice similar to Yuming's story. And there was this video and... It's actually a fun fact that our brain can't comprehend large numbers, like Chloe was saying about the T-shirts. And in the video, this guy had like loads of grains of like rice and he was putting it in proportion, like how much the world is allowed to consume in fossil fuels and, or, yeah, fossil fuels and how much we produce CO2 emissions and just seeing the large mountains of rice, like the richer countries using all this and then compared to the smaller countries, but the smaller countries are being worse affected by climate change and they're not even producing, you know, enough to actually affect anything and that really was I just looked at that and I was like oh my god that's shocking you know yeah yeah 100% I think for me it was the fact that I love to swim in the sea Uh, I swim all through the year I swim at Christmas I swim at New Year's um, and I remember when I was younger like watching beaches be like completely destroyed by human action like the pollution on the beaches the water becoming not safe to swim in Uh, so then from then like little eight-year-old Evie was doing her research and trying to figure out what I could do and then with that, my mom was part of a group and we organised beach cleans and we were able to do our own little parts. Then that just really became my journey. And now here we are, all of us together. So you all saw a need for change. Uh, it's clear that we can't continue living in the same way without having a negative in- impact. So what changes do you think are easy to make and which do you think are hard? Hugh, what do you think people will find hardest to give up? Hardest to give up? Uh, lots of giant massive corporations have been like mass polluting for years and it's how they get rid of say waste and things they can't like change the whole like shift the whole way that their company works just for um a thought that some people don't even believe in so they that might be it yeah Yeah. and you ming what do you think is an easy win honestly like if change was easy i think we'd already be out of this mess but uh, no change is easy but I think even starting something as small as a small garden or a small pot of plants in your balcony that supports wildlife, that's a start, you know. Every little thing counts, really. And Chloe, broadly, 
What do you think will be the biggest challenge to change? I think the biggest challenge to change, like broadly speaking now, which we can probably do nothing as a small group other than protest against it, would be like big companies. Like they are the ones, just as Emily said, the big countries, they're the ones making the highest CO2 emissions and they're probably being the ones least affected. So the big companies, the big countries, like they have to take the responsibility and understand that they will make a financial loss right now, but it's worth it for the fact that their future generations will continue to get to exist so I think it's at a stage where the big companies and the big countries need to realise that their actions are for the future rather than looking at the current state. Yeah and Emily I'm going to ask you the same what will be hard to change within our societies? I think the hardest thing to change within our societies and this is very broad but just people's behaviours in general When people are set in their ways, they don't, like, swing from that, especially, like, the convenience of, like, being unsustainable. So, like, even if you have, like, a plastic bottle, you can just throw it away, you don't have to worry about it. Whereas if you have a reusable bottle, you have to, like, wash it and do all that. Um, So it's going to be really difficult to just sway people from their old actions and, you know, bring in this new thing that, okay, it might take a bit more time, but in the long run, you have to see, like, you know, in the long run, it's going to do more damage than good, what you're already doing. Yeah, I'm going to completely echo you with that one. It's just really getting people to change their minds and realise that what we're doing has such an impact and that if one of us is like, oh, no, I'm only one person, I can't make any change. And if everyone thinks the same, then nothing will be done. So, you know, it is important for everyone's mindsets to get more open to change. So it's clear that we all see the problems and we want to get the solutions going to make a more livable future. So my final question for today is... What do you feel needs to happen to start major behavioural changes across society? Emily, I'll come back to you again. Okay. Um, I think, you know, it all starts with education. So I think that even we had to just do a thing on this, but just bringing in more inclusive education and more, I suppose, empowering education, like what you was talking about earlier, just like, sure, we learn about the problems, but we need to empower who are teaching how to tackle those problems because when you tell people that oh this is going to happen in the next few years and this is what's going to this is what that's going to do to you it can just be really you know like depressing and people aren't going to want to take action as it was when we empower them or like you can actually do this or you can get involved in this like Irish School Sustainability Network you can get involved in this then it's more empowering and then people are more likely to take action so I think doing that and empowering people through education is probably a big step in the right way. Yeah, and Hugh, how do you think change will happen? Change, maybe if... So there's, like, there's a thing, online shipping, it's an easier thing, so you you would maybe want to do that more, but if you thought about how the easier thing could be harder for the environment, then you could change, because online shipping, to take something from one country to another, it would take all the plane fuel, the petrol of the trucks that bring it, so it would do more harm than if you just went out and bought something local. So yeah. the, the behavioural change of what's easy and hard. Very good. And Chloe, what do you feel will make change possible? I think just as Emily said, education empowerment is massive. Like feeling like you have a community. For us, our environment, our planet is our like is one large global community. And it's the one community I suppose we all share. We all get to live on this planet and it is an opportunity, it's a privilege and we shouldn't take that for granted just every day. It's it's easy to forget about it, but it actually is. So spending that time in nature and realising this is what I have and I, I don't want to lose this. So when I come back inside now, I'm going to be more mindful. I'm going to turn off the lights and that sort of thing. And then I suppose on a bigger scale, the laws have to come in. The government has to take control, even if it means um, can't like current consequences, it'll mean long term positive impact. So I think that's the second part. Such a good message. And Yiming, I'm going to give you the final thought. Well, that's, what was the question again? I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, I was listening so what do you think can ha- make major behavioural change in our societies? I think policy. If we can, like, it's at a policy changing level. Like, if we can get the government to, I don't know, make ed- climate action education mandatory for, I don't know, like Chloe suggested, a module for TY then what can happen is they'll immediately from a young age they can form very good habits and I think if you form the habits earlier you can definitely keep them going until you're an adult and once you're an adult then you can influence your children to do the same. Yeah all great points I definitely think that 
you know, getting people moving is people like us, people who are ready to talk up and speak up about what we think will achieve real change. Uh, you know, shows like Ecolution, uh, listening to podcasts and just getting everyone listening and ready to have the climate conversations that are so desperate for, for societal need, uh, change. So that's our show for today. A big thank you to the panel, Hugh, Yu Ming, Emily and Chloe. Again, you can find the podcast version of Ecolution and the episode that inspired today's conversation wherever you get your podcasts. And please do like and subscribe. We appreciate knowing you're out there and we're not on our own. If you have thoughts you'd like us to hear, get in touch at the email below, junior at rte.ie. See you next time. Ecolution.